Has there ever been a time that you truly believe you've encountered something paranormal? I wonder if it is the house that tends to be the problem. When I was 10, I was staying the night at my grandma's house. I wasn't really thinking about anything in particular, I was tired and up in the kitchen making some ramen, thinking about how god darn long this cheap stove was taking just to boil water on a high setting. When out of nowhere, I felt a presence behind me, and I simultaneously became terrified out of my fleeing mind. It's hard to describe in words just how awful this thing was. I feel uncomfortable describing this, even. It was vile, horrible, completely evil. The feeling that it emanated was just so awful that I felt like death was standing a few feet away from me. I'm not a believer in weird psychic voodoo stuff and never have been, but I actually felt a strong negative energy coming from it, and I felt I could accurately tell where it was standing just because of this. Very overwhelming. I felt very much in danger from my welding. This was because the feeling that it gave off was so overpowering, it was just as real as if a mass ender was standing there in the flesh, about to put me through torture with a blade. This thing hated my guts. It was hostile and wanted me to come to harm. I couldn't even see it, heck, if I had a choice, I wouldn't want to see it, and I could tell all of these things. It was standing at my only exit from the kitchen, and there was no way in heck I was going to walk towards that thing. I mean, my body did not like this thing at all. I instinctively pushed myself against the back wall. I started praying to God. I have a Christian faith, and so I had learned that the word of God, and commanding evil in God's name, can cast evil away. When I stood up to it with God, boy did it get angry. Oh man. But I didn't back down. I started singing church songs in a fetal position. I felt it get closer and closer to me. But eventually, after what seemed like forever, exact time frame is unknown since I was scared, I could tell when it went away. The difference was like night and day. When it left, the room lightened. I felt my body, just as it had instinctively tensed up, relax as soon as that thing left. To this day, I have not had an experience like this before or since. People can speculate on what it might have been, but. I have no personal doubt that it was something truly evil, and not just because of my faith. You guys, if there is an infernal abyss, I'm telling you that you don't want to go there. Not ever. And I hate going to grandma's house now. When I was young, I lived in a small house in the middle of nowhere, out in the country. I swear things would be moved across the room. For example, I specifically remember laying my water bottle down on the kitchen table and running to the restroom in the middle of summer. When I got back, the bottle would be somewhere else, usually the table or sitting on the floor. Both my parents were outside. Shelves would be open when we got home, curtains pulled down when they were up, light bulbs blew up often, and at night, you would hear walking in the living room even though everyone was in bed. Parents worked hard and bought a house a few years after, but we still use the place for storage and allow other family to store things there, it's safe. My father's brother went there one day and ended up calling our new house. He explained something is not right in that house and we can't get him to get his stuff from there anymore. He refuses to even go on the same road where the house is. My family thought it was silly, but we kind of knew why. About five years ago when I finally got my license, I offered to put some boxes of things from my grandmother in the house. Drove up to the house remembering my childhood but got a rude wake-up call. When I entered, all the shelves were opened like usual, but there were scratches on the inside like something wanted out. I thought a possum or something found a way into the house. Went around the corner to what used to be my mother's bedroom to drop the box and leave, then all of the sudden, I heard a weird noise behind me. I thought I pissed a rodent off and did not want to get bit, but when I turned around, there was a black outline of a person. It seemed like it was staring right at me. I put the box at my feet while keeping my eyes on this thing. It stayed there only five more seconds until it faded. I remember stepping over the box and running out of the house, locking it, jumping in the vehicle and taking off as fast as I could. Everything said to get the F out of there now. I saw it looking back at me in my mirror as I left. This happened five years ago, and I still have not been back. I was at my grandparents' house one night. My grandmother then came into my room at 3.30 in the morning and told me, your grandfather needs your help. Get up. This sort of startled me, because she has never done anything like this. I go out to where my grandfather is right outside the door that goes into the garage, and he tells me that, the garage door just went up and down six or seven times. We need to check it out. I obviously said all right, 
and we went into the garage, only to find the pull string that prevents the door from opening, which can only be pulled from the inside, was pulled. He looks at me and says, we have to go outside to fix it, so no one can get in. We then head outside, and when we rounded the corner, to look at the garage, the motion lights came on and there seemed to be scratches on the door. He and I fixed the door, and went back to bed. About two weeks after this, I was staying there again, and woke up at around 2.30 in the morning, to hear stomping in the kitchen, which is very close to my room. I get up, and hear the stomps come closer to my door and stop. I figured that my grandfather was adjusting the thermostat. I opened my door to see what was going on, only to find that everyone in the house was asleep and all the lights were turned off. Needless to say, I didn't sleep well that night. A few weeks passed, and I went over there on a weekend because I had nothing better to do. Since it was a weekend, I stayed up rather late and fell asleep watching TV on my bed with my door opened. It was about 1.30 in the morning, and for whatever reason, I woke up without any reason. I look around and realize that I had fallen asleep with the TV on. I looked at my door, and at that instance, I saw a man-sized figure step out of my doorway and walk down the hall towards the kitchen. I slammed my door and stayed up all night. By this time, I was pretty convinced I had a demon or ghost or something in my grandparents' house. I was just relieved that whatever was in their house wasn't following me. Maybe a month after the last incident happened, I was at my dad's house, and I was about to go to sleep. At my dad's, I am on the other side of the house from everyone. It was maybe 10.30 at night, and I was about to go to sleep. I had laid down, turned my TV off, and was drifting to sleep. Then outside of my door, I heard a combination of stomping and a really low sound. This honestly scared the heck out of me. I, in all of my infinite wisdom, decided to see what it was. When I opened my door, I saw the same thing that I saw at my grandparents' house. I teared up from fear and left the light on and fitfully tried to sleep. It didn't work well. Maybe a month and a half had passed after the last incident. I was at a friend's house and he and I cleaned out his shed so we could just hang out in there and smoke his calaxian. He usually has a lot of people over to his house, but this night, it was just him and I. We were smoking calaxian and were almost finished. We were just listening to some music, and I was just sitting there listening to the music when all of the sudden, a black flash darted underneath my legs, but I didn't feel anything. I start to look around to see if one of his cats came in with us. As I started to look around, I realized that there is no cat in the shed. I start to become afraid on the inside, but trying to keep myself outwardly calm. I look up at my friend, who has the look of being close to panic, and all he says to me is, I think something just ran underneath your legs. At this point, I started freaking out because I didn't say anything about it. He told me that he saw it as well. We both ran out of the shed and went into his house and just watched TV until we calmed down and went to sleep. Nothing had happened for many weeks, so I figured it was over with. Except it wasn't. One night, I was at a friend's house and he lives on a dock and we were on his dock one night. He and I were sitting next to each other and I was looking at the stars not paying attention to him. All of the sudden, I feel him walk next to me and start walking off the dock towards his house. Without looking, I asked, hey man, where are you going? And he answered me and was right next to me and hadn't moved. I quickly turned around to see and saw a dark figure walking towards his house. I asked him if he saw anything, and he said, see what? I thought you got up and started walking up. After I told him what had gone down, we quickly got our stuff and went inside. I was in high school and my youngest brother was about two years old. One night, everyone was sitting at the dinner table enjoying a nice meal, when my little brother starts laughing and conversing with the empty chair across from him. This kid is laughing his butt off and having a great time. He kept referring to whoever it was he was talking to as the man. After a few minutes of this, he wants to get up, I guess it's time for the man to leave. I pick him up and carry him to the front door, he goes from laughing and happy to clinging to me for dear life and terrified as soon as we get to the door. Overall super creepy experience, I was very happy to leave that house. When I was about 17, I was at my friend's apartment building, which his parents owned. We had an apartment to hang out in on the top floor and used to go to the roof to smoke. That night, we were about to go up, but I had to pee, so I told him I'd meet him up there. After I was done, I went up the stairs to the attic portion that was connected to the roof. There were no lights, so we always used our phones to guide us. It was an old building, and the attic was creepy and cluttered all the time. 
As I made my way to the roof door, I saw a shadow pass by me. I followed the direction it went thinking it was my friend. I kept saying that I knew it was him and to stop playing around. It passed me a few more times when I heard my friend's voice from downstairs. He got a call from his GF and was in another room talking to her the whole time. I have no idea what that shadow figure was and I still refuse to go back up to the roof at night after that. I was working on a film shooting on location in a pub somewhere in London, upstairs in these super nasty flats, where only those who'd reached the lowest point in their lives would have stayed. Calaxian addicts and those other kind of people. Bad things must have happened there. The unit had moved downstairs and I was doing a look around for any gear we might have left. One room had been blacked out by the lighting guys and blue gel taped over the solitary light bulb in the room, casting an eerie blue light over the room. I entered this room and had a quick look under a bed with my torch, in case anything had been kicked over. Immediately, I felt the hairs on my neck start to rise. I sit up on my knees and see a dark figure in the corner of my eye. I look over, shining my torch in the direction to illuminate nothing. At this point I think, nope, and decide to leave. I hurried into the hallway towards the front door, my pace quickening with every step as my mind starts to wander. The front door at this point is wedged open with a very large wooden wedge, the kind of grips used to level dolly track and such. I don't want to look behind me. As I step through the door, it slammed immediately. I, at this point, fill my pants and descend three flights of stairs in mere seconds. I've tried to rationalize what might have caused the door to shut, but there is no explanation. Even if I kicked the wedge out, which I'm sure I didn't, it would have taken a few seconds for the door to close. There was nobody up in that flat with me, 